Morning everyone, uh, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here. Uh, thank you for joining us again. This is our 20th live cook, I think. Something like that. Um, and as promised, we are going to cook you that picanha that we uh, cooked, uh, we mentioned last week. So a beef rump cap, and we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, but as usual, we're gonna do the intros. So taking this, Helena is on the camera, which means there's nobody on the iPad. Um, so um, we won't be typing anything, um, but we do have Helena's mum here because um, she couldn't resist the picanha. So uh, I'll turn you back and we're gonna get straight into it. So um, usual three main dishes. I'm actually gonna do a fourth, but uh, we'll just, we'll, we've done that before. So, um, so we're gonna do the picanha. We're gonna do it on a rotisserie. Uh, we tried it yesterday. Oh my God, it's good. Um, yeah. I thought reverse seared picanha was good. This is even better. So we're gonna do that. Uh, we are going to do a vegetable ratatouille to go with it. Uh, we're gonna do some um, part boiled and then fried off uh, new potatoes that we do in all of our cooking classes. Everyone loves them. Um, that's the dish that isn't on the list. And then we're gonna do, um, got a book um, yesterday, cookbook, um, Speedy Mob. Um, 12 minute meals for four people. Um, we're gonna do a dessert that just totally appealed to me. I've not done this yet. Um, it, so this could be an absolute disaster. So we're gonna do French toast, but with croissants, um, something different. And we haven't practiced this, so uh, <laughs> it should be fun. Right, there you go, you carry on reading that, Mama. Um, so let's get straight into the picanha. We're gonna be up against it with the picanha, so we'll go straight into it. So I'm just gonna grab my spit. And if we come over here, Helena. Yeah, I'll move that chair out of the way for you. Right. Okay. okay. You're supposed to look at me as well. Oh, you're going to sit down on the job. I see how this works. So, um, from the GOG, my favourite farm shop, or one of them. Oh, and um, Miles has just joined. Oh, well done, Miles. Um, right, so, Miles, who's just joined, is my butcher. Um, I got this from him yesterday. Uh, we got two, in fact. Uh, so, we've already done, or two part of. Um, but this is a picanha. So the picanha is a beef rump cow. Um, so if you think about the back end of the cow, the, where its tail is and that bit, right on the top there is a triangular piece of meat called this. It's the rump. So if the skin was over the top, um, this is a beef rump cap. Now Mars has kindly trimmed up most of this. It's a lovely looking piece of meat. And we're going to cook this. So this, a picanha, if you haven't had it, um, you might have to go to find a butcher who will do it for you, but is stunning. Um, can you see this fat here? Beautiful, um, creamy color. This is a grass fed. You can tell from that it's grass fed. Uh, if it were white, it'd be corn, uh, uh, corn fed, uh, but this is lovely grass fed piece of meat. Uh, and what we're looking for when we're doing this is we're looking for a grain. Um, and the grain on this bit of meat all goes down into this corner here. Can you see if I pull it, you can see there's stripes of, gr of, the, of the muscle. It's how the muscle lies. Now, ideally, when you're, um, you can come out a bit, Helena. Uh, when uh, you're up a bit, that's it. Um, <laughs> ideally, when you're um, cutting a piece of meat, you wanna be cutting across the grain uh, because then it will feel more tender. So we have two options here. We can cut this into steaks that way, or we can cut it into steaks that way. And we did it yesterday with the grain. It was lovely. So you're basically going to fan it out. So I'm going to cut this into four. I'll probably only cook three. We'll have a bit of spare. Um, and then when you serve it, you're going to cut across the other way. Ooh, but that will become more obvious. So I want some nice thick steaks. So um, I'm going to go like that on this one. Okay. And then we're going to cut another one. That. And I'll do a third. I might take. In fact, I'm going to go for this end because this has got some beautiful fat on it. Okay, so we have some nice steaks, and you can see the grains coming along here. We could have cut it the other way. Um, and now, what we're going to do is get these, and this is the difficult bit get them onto the skewer. So hopefully, I won't skewer it myself.
they're just going to burn um, but we'll use those a bit later right take that one out of the way i'll just put it on the on tray minute, got what's that sounds gone are we back can you hear us just somebody say we can hear us that might be operator error i think oh was it well what did you do <laughs> i'm not telling you oh for god's sake <laughs> So which bit did you miss? I've got three lovely bits of canya on there. I've missed that bit. I need to just go through there a bit better. Need to be a bit strong for that. Right, and now all we're gonna do, salt them up. There is gonna be a lot of salt on here, but don't worry about it. Um, if any of you know me, you know I like a bit of salt on here, but a lot of it will drop off as we cook. And that is our three canyons. Now, what I haven't done is put the skewers into these. I'm going to rely on these just to turn on their own. Um, hopefully, this end one will. We'll find out. Right, we're taking it over to the barbie. Come on over, Helena. So, um, we have this one slightly warm. One egg at just over 200 degrees, 220, something like that. Um, so, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to pop these down for a second. I have a, a chunk of sweet chestnut. I'm going to chuck that in there. Have a look at that. And then I'm going to put my rotisserie on. So my let's queue is going on. Just put it towards the front. Get my motor. And turn that on. Like that. And then we'll get these in. So they're going to sit and they're just going to spin. Um, we're going to pull the lid down, obviously. Always cook with the lid shut. Um, yeah, that one might, I might. Well, we'll see how we get on with that one. Might have to put a spike on it, but we can always do that. So I'm going to shut this now. Close that down. Those are going to take about 30 minutes to cook. And we're going to do it by, um, we'll use a thermo pen, probe them. I want them to be about 53, 55 degrees when they're done. So we'll probably take them off at late 40s uh, and let them rest. And that resting process will get them up, but we'll come back to those. So let me just wash my hands. Any questions, Helena? Uh, no questions so far. Someone did say the video is frozen, but I'm assuming it's, it's back again. No, I've not noticed it freeze. How many people have we got on? 32. Okay, so if, uh, if, if, if anyone wasn't... says it's, it's there's any issues, can you just give me a shout since there's only two of us? <laughs> right. So you can see we've got some smoke coming now. That's coming from the um, sweet chestnut. I like yes. sweet chestnut. It's a general uh, as a general uh, uh, a wood. Gives a nice flavour. Um, I pretty much use only that at the moment. I love it so much. Uh, it's from a company called Grilling Woods, who are based in Hertfordshire. Uh, and I've put a link on the, the page to, to that so you can find where to get that if you want to get some of that. Okay, so we've got our canyon on and going. Now we need to get moving over here. So we're going to do a ratatouille. So this egg, just about 200 degrees. I've already chopped up some veg. And what I'm going to do very quickly is just sear it before we put it on a, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on this griddle. So I've got the um, expander system in here got a, a cast iron uh, plancher up there so I'm just going to get these riddle them up a little bit just to put some color onto them uh, and we'll flip those over in a minute we'll get some color on these onions as well and then we'll start putting more stuff on so that, that all I've got is uh, just a half moon plancher there I've got half moon cast iron this side uh, the point of that is just to stop this moving um, so it will stay there. I've also got the stainless steel grids below in case later on I want to, I'm going to cook this up here, but if I want to move it down and give it a bit more heat, I can move it down there. Um, so you'll be able to see that in a minute. And this is sitting at roughly 200 degrees. So, right, let's have our first look. Okay. Check that piece is going around, whether I need to put a skewer on. Um, I might need to put one of these onto the, uh, and hold it in place. We'll see. So can you just explain again what you've done with this? Yeah, so um, I've cut the picanha into nice chunks. Um, I've got some wood at the bottom. I think they're all turning, is that one going around? Yeah, they're all turning nicely. Um, I've got some wood at the bottom just to give it some smoke. I'm over a direct heat here. I'm at about 200 degrees and you can already see some color going into that, into that meat. It's gonna be delicious. 
um, and it's just gonna spin for the next yeah that one I might need to let's put one on to do it so just to show you can lift these off while it's hot uh, we can thread that on that's gonna go either side of that bit of meat I'm gonna tighten it and put it straight back in now you couldn't do that with the, the Kamado Joe version because it doesn't have a handle um, so that will just spin and that will just hold it in place a little bit better now okay you might have to look at that in, in a minute but we'll see should be fine we didn't use one yesterday it worked perfectly so okay let's go back to these just gonna flip these over Ooh, going quickly because i put a lot of oil on there earlier it's just got a bit of bit burnt oil oh, that's good. those in just want that char on them just because it will make them taste so much better right give those another couple of minutes in the meantime we are uh, we've got a uh, just a cast iron skillet I'll get some oil in that what I think I'll do is we'll get it on the other side get it warming up I'll just leave it at an angle for that it doesn't matter Dead. Move it over. there we go um, and then I'm going to chop those veg up a bit, put them into that skillet. Um, but yeah, we'll get some heat on that and it will speed things up. To go with it, just some chopped tomatoes. So a couple of large um, tomatoes chopped. And we've got some, um, some sugar, um, some Italian herbs, and some good quality uh, red wine vinegar. Right, any questions? No, no questions so far. Come on, people. We're going to have a drink while you're waiting. Right, let's have another look. Look at the colour going on that already. Look at the colour of the fat, that's delicious. Just stop opening it and looking really. It's cheating. Paul would tell me off. So who have we got on this morning? Any hangovers? Any celebrations? Any birthdays? Marcus Bradford's joined. Morning Marcus from the GOG. So I've just been uh, talking about your lovely meat. So this is... Uh, um, yeah, Gog Magog um, Picanha, one of my favourites. Okay, so someone said, where do you get your egg tables from? The big actually... ones are Big Green Egg themselves. The little plasticky stainless steel things are a company called Kita. Um, you can buy them various different places. I bought them a few years ago from Argos for 50 quid each, but they're now about a hundred and something quid, unfortunately. Um, and it's been attacked by a wasp. Um, and uh, someone, or Stewie, has asked how big was the picanha you had? Uh, I will tell you. I'll get the I would say about 1.6, typical, uh, 1.6 kilos. So, yeah, a big one. That's about as big as they come. Uh, occasionally you'll get, uh, occasionally you might get one that is, is a little bit bigger, but not very often. Okay. Okay. So, uh, gonna go in with these. Okay. Can you uh, explain how you would cook a picanha if you didn't have a rotisserie? Yes. Go on my website. Uh, there is a recipe for a uh, reverse seared. That's better. They're looking lush. Uh, reverse seared picanha is one of my favourite ways of cooking. Um, we do it in most of the classes. Um, but essentially, yeah, you're just reverse searing it. So um, you're cooking it slowly. So you're bringing up the internal temperature of the picanha uh, nice and slowly. Uh, so I bring it up normally to about 48 degrees C. Take it off. Just going to chop these up. Um, okay. Take it off and then uh, get your egg nice and hot. So your initial bit you're doing at 110. Uh, second bit you're doing at 250. So you get your egg up to 250 and then just sear the outside. Okay. Stunning. So someone's asked. The where... recipe's on the website. No, where do you get the rotisseries from? Uh, the rotisseries uh, you get from me. Um, I am the UK importer of the Let's Q rotisserie. So um, uh, yeah, we've just uh, basically started um, selling them. Uh, they're an alternative to the um, Kamado Joe version. They're a lot cheaper. They're as good if not better but I will do a review I've got a commander I've got a, a Joe Tisserie coming on 
Monday. Uh, we're supposed to be here Friday, but anyway, yeah, so uh, from me. So, uh, Franco has said that Gardens Garden for Less have the uh, keto tables on offer at the moment. There you go, thank you, Franco. And um, I am just showing Mark. Thomason that we do indeed have sunshine blue skies <laughs> <laughs> it does get sunny some Saturdays it just doesn't appear to uh, be very often okay so morning Mark by the way um, for those of you who don't know Mark Mark is smoked fine food uh, on online um, based up in Newcastle is a wicked chef wicked cook he is currently doing a series of I'm not in I can't remember his Italy. exact uh, I'm not in Italy um, but if I was, this is what I'd be eating. So he's cooking everything Italian. Okay, so someone has asked about the Let's Q. That is, is it true that if you turn the motor through 180 degrees, it's possible to use with the side table? Uh, somebody has told me that, yes. Uh, I'm going to pop these in and then get my hands washed. Okay. Um, so we've got all of those veg now going back in. They've got a nice char on them. We'll get those back in. A bit, should have cleaned that a little bit better it's got a bit of soot on it but that's fine we're going to get some um, tomatoes in there we are going to get some tomato puree in there about three tablespoons as as ever with me it's all a bit of a guesswork guesswork uh, that's about two teaspoons of sugar and two teaspoons of um, Italian herbs and I'm going to go in with the red wine vinegar now I haven't put any garlic in, um, so about three or four tablespoons of red wine vinegar. We'll give that a little stir up. Um, I haven't put any garlic in. We made this the other day without garlic and it was just as good. So, oops, go and get a spoon. So you have a look at that while I wash my hands. Ooh, a fair lot of amount smoke of smoke coming off our yeah. um... So the fat will be drifting. Helen is shutting that, well done. And we'll get in here, can you see the smoke coming? Still sitting at just over 200, which is perfect. That's a bit loose. When you open it, be careful. <coughs> so look at those, delish. Now you're gonna get a bit of flames when you open it, because it, the, the, uh, because the fat's dripping but what you can do is get in there and put your temperature in it's down at 30 something 28 on that one 23 they're low so it needs more but look at the fat it's going to be delicious and it will start to crisp up as it cooks so we'll get that lid down uh, someone has just asked could you just tell them what we've got in the skillet ready for the, with the ratatouille can you remind people in the skillet so in the skillet for the ratatouille we've got some um, courgette which i just griddled We've got some red onions, two small red onions, which I just griddled a bit before I chopped them up. We've got two um, chunky sized tomatoes chopped up. We've got about three tablespoons of uh, tomato puree. We've got two teaspoons of sugar. We've got about a tablespoon or a bit more than that of Italian herbs. Uh, we've got three or four tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And what have I forgotten? Red, did you say red onion? Oh, and some pepper, some okay. pepper. So, yeah, right. What are you doing with potatoes? Um, the potatoes here, I'm going to get on and I'm, I'll do that now. Okay. So, I'm going to, oh, by the way, people, those, um, I've recommended those gloves for ages and they've sold out. There is an almost identical pair now on Amazon. Um, I've linked them from my site. Um, they've got a slightly different cuff, but otherwise they are identical. Love them. Um, so I bought a pair just to see what they were like, um, do like them, so you can now get them, they're linked from the same page on my website, so if you go to the, uh, um, uh, what's the page I'm looking for? Barbecue Essentials. Essentials, yeah, Barbecue Essentials, and um, what I'm going to do, by the way, is just flip over this griddle, because I like the flat side for potatoes, which you can do quite easily with a pair of those gloves, usual trick. bit of foil to knock off all the bits. I'll get a bit of uh, paper towel. So 
So someone's asked, how much roughly does a 1.6 kilogram picanha cost? Uh, depends where you buy it. Yeah. Um, if you're going to the Gogs, uh, I will tell you exactly. Right. And that is how you re-season cast iron. Give it a good rub. I'll give it another bit of paper. I'll just chuck that in there for a sec. £37.40 that one. No, oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, according to Mama over there, that one was 37 quid. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's become a very popular cut and uh, has doubled in price in the last, well, it's more than doubled in price in the last four years, but it's supply and demand. Right, potatoes going on, just on the griddle. Lots of oil on them, and we'll just twist those running out of oil. Good job, I don't need any more. I'll go and find some in a minute. Uh, a bit of oil on there. That. Sorry? And I want some salt. And we'll get our plate, our <laughs> ratatouille back on. Everyone's blaming you for making it so popular. For making? The Kenya popular. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the barbecue scene has made it so popular. We'll get that going. So just a reminder, there's only two of us today. So um, I'm doing the camera, so sorry for the shoddy camera work. Um, uh, but if anyone's got any questions, just keep them coming. I just can't respond on the comments today. Get in on that fat because it's starting to bubble, starting to crisp up. Um, if I get in, we're about 30 something there, a bit higher on that one, 28 on that one, so a little while to go. Um, what you can do with a with this um, style of meat with a picanha um, is you can cook it faster and then you could slice bits off and then put it back on and then take it off and slice bits off. That's how the Brazilians would eat it. So it's a Brazilian cut of beef. Um, I'm gonna actually cook the whole lot. I'm cooking it relatively slow, 200 degrees, so it doesn't cook the outside, nuke the outside before the inside's cooked. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Right, let's have a go at this. <laughs> now this could be a disaster. So we'll get these going. So in here, I have, um, Icing sugar. I want to say I've got two tablespoons, but I can't remember. Um, I've got, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. Right, I've got three eggs going in. Obviously, I'm putting them into a bowl and checking them that they're fine first. Not. So, three eggs going in. We're going to go in with about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, not essence. Uh, we're going in with 100 millilitres of water. Uh, milk. Water, milk. Oh dear. Let's get those. And then we're going to whisk it up. She wouldn't let me have a bowl because it was extra washing up. So if it goes everywhere, it's Helena's fault. I wanted a bowl. No. It works fine. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh my goodness. I'll probably get it on my trousers and that'd be even worse. <laughs> So basically, we've just got a little bit of a custody like there. I'm going to take some knobs of butter. Now, in my egg, I have a cast iron pan, about 200 degrees. Pull that shut for a second. We're going to get the uh, croissants, and basically, you get your fish slice and you push them down in this. And the idea is they soak it up. So it's a bit like a uh, piece of French toast. I'll put them both in at the same time. Yep. Then give them a little while. I might burn this closer. Paul White says you might get food stuck in your fancy turnips. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, down in Devon. Hope you had a lovely holiday, Paul. Yeah. How's quarantine going? A 
and the actual recipe in the book says just make sure they take on loads of this, which they are doing. Right. Yes, yeah, so it takes more than you think it's going to. So I am the messiest chef, aren't I? Yeah. All right, get those bad boys in there. So we're going to take about two minutes per side. So we'll get that cooking. God, look at the mess. Right. Just going to wash my hands again. Excellent. We'll just do a little hand of the golden. Now. And I'm sitting in the sunshine. <laughs> oh, you back? Yeah. Obviously, if you were cooking this at home, you'd do this after you've served all of that. But um, that's not the way it works here. Uh, we're going to do these first. Good. Another minute, all right. Um, so yeah, so you wait until afterwards. They're really quick. They're gonna take um, all of about, well, the whole book, the whole of that book is 12 minute meals. So sorry about the smoke. That you Helen might want to refer here. back to the book. Yeah, so the book is um, um, Speedy Mob, um, uh, and it's linked already on the page. So just have a look at that. Um, there's enough in here to do four, um, but we're only gonna do two. That's all we need to do. So, right, let's flip these over. I should cook them the other way up first, but oh. And now get some flaked almonds. I'm gonna get those on the top. Let's warm them up while we put the other sides. I'm just gonna move these around through the butter. <laughs> And we're going to give those another two minutes. Do you need to give anything a zhuzh? Yeah, I'm going to go and zhuzh some ratatouille. I'll get a spoon, that might be easier. Sorry about the shoddy camera work. Uh, don't you be <laughs> giving me any chopsy. Now, if you were just cooking, uh, if you were... Smells lovely. Yeah. If you're at home and you've only got one egg, you could slide this up to the back and you could cook some steaks here. You could cook other things. So um, the fact that we're just doing two things on here, not a problem. Potatoes are getting on. I'm going to go and have to get some more oil. But, um, let's get this. Yeah, Actually, gonna... someone asked a little bit earlier, is the Mini Max back in stock? Uh, the Mini Max isn't back in stock yet, but you can pre-order it. So if you do want one, give me a shout and I can quote you. Um, so yeah, you can get in the queue of people waiting to get them. Um, they should be back in towards the end of September, unless they came in yesterday. I didn't check yesterday, um, but they are mid to late September for them. Uh, same with the, the large and then hopefully late September, early October for the convectors uh, and so on. So let's have a look at our... Morning Corrine. Here we go. Okay. Oof. Hello. Do I... Stand back, a little bit smoky. <laughs> That's our wood chunk in there. Oh, look at the colour. 44, 45, 45, a little bit. Oh, they're not far off. They're a couple of minutes off at the most. They are good. Oh, don't forget those croissant things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're fine. Right. So, French toast. Oh, they're lovely and soft. Croissants. Leave that in there. Let's take this out of the way. Fun in the wind. <laughs> uh, so a bit more of our ice and sugar. I'm tempted to have a bite of one of these. They look stunning. Look good. Yeah. Right, let's take them over to the table. I'm going to eat that. Okay. Just to clean my knife. Yeah. Just give my knife a little bit of a clean. So these are French toast croissants um, with 
bit of ice and sugar, a bit of almond. No. It's all right, don't worry, it's only wasp. Just cut off a tiny bit and give mum a bit to try. What are you viewing? I'm looking at that croissant. Yeah, well, just... Delicious. Uh, so Jay has just mm. asked, do you soak your wood chunk? No. Um, I never soak wood chunks or chip, chips. Um, sorry, I shouldn't talk with my mouth off, should I? Um, oh, I see, chef's camera lady's taking a piece. Huge piece, she's probably gonna choke now. Um, <laughs> No, I don't soak mm. chips and chunks. Um, essentially, what do we think? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Um, you don't need to. Uh, basically, the wood isn't going to burn until it's dry. Um, but a lot of other people want the uh, other manufacturers want the inside of their products to be moist um, because meat will take on smoke better when it's cold and wet. Um, you can probably come a bit closer, Helena, so people can hear. Um, but in an egg, it's such a moist environment anyway, you don't need to do that. That's my take on it. Now, we love... Oof. Sorry, neighbours. Um, we love our steak rare, so I am... taking these out. Simple as that. Pull that shut, shut the lid, shut that. Take my coke out of the way. And Helena, you might want to get in there. It's like, I'll turn it this way just so you can see the fat on the back of those. Because that fat is such a delicious colour. Right, we're going to leave those to rest a minute. Um, and then we'll slice through and we'll take them off the spit. The spit, by the way, will push heat into them as well. So they'll cook from the inside a little bit as well. So that really helps. Um, but this fat here is just, it's crispy. But yesterday it was absolutely stunning. Tastes good now. Right, back to this one. Okay. Ratatouille is coming on. I haven't put any salt in it yet. I might leave that for you guys to do. But you can see it's all breaking down nicely. You could use aubergine in here. We haven't got any today. We'll get in and we'll start flipping some of these over. The mini roasties. Um, if you can, try and cook them all. You know, make sure you flip them all. It takes a little while, but it's well worth it. Um, and just salt and oil on those. Got them stuck on there. Oops. Oh, last one. go to the squirrel there we go so another couple of mins on those okay so someone has asked well our I lovely like friend in Paul, Paul down in Devon has asked can you use your fear ju up, Helena, you just as a fire pit can you use sorry the egg no the fear just as a fire oh, pit absolutely yeah but it's at that level so Helena's talking about the fear come on out. well that finishes cooking so um, yeah, this is the Afia. It is a fire pit. Um, so if you look in, there's no logs in here at the moment, but um, you put logs in here and then you cook around on the outside. Can you use it as a fire pit? Just a fire pit? Absolutely. So uh, uh, yeah, but you, it's at this level. You don't want to be moving it. This is really heavy. This top bit, I think it's like 50 kilos, 40 kilos. Um, it takes two of you to lift it, but the rest of it, it's really easy. I, I put this together on my own, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'd recommend two of you, so you get one hand on the inside. But yeah, use it the fire pit, very social, but not as uh, versatile as the egg. Right, let's go get everything off, shall we? Um, in fact, I'm just gonna clean this board. No, I'm not, I'm gonna use the other board. I'll get this one out of the way. These oh, are heavy. They've got a lovely cutout on the back so that you can use them as a, a bowl. Let's take this over. Get rid of my wipes. I'm going to get my ratatouille, get my potatoes, get my bowl. You couldn't run into the kitchen to use that. 
bowl. Bowl. Just for potatoes, like a little white one or a. Where am I going to find it? Um, middle drawer, right off the cooker. this so she's found them 53 degrees absolutely perfect for what I want a little bit over on that one so that's for the person who wants it a bit more done a little bit less so we'll start with this end one typical to the far end but perfect thank you right just gonna get my potatoes We've started tucking into the croissant. Delicious. Did you like them, Mum? Lovely. Awesome. Lovely. Got those. Shut that egg. That's done. Pop those out. And we'll get a pair of tongs. Now I've left it inside, but there is a little um, uh, a little spanner that comes with those, so you can undo it. Just going to get a set of gloves to take that piece off. Right. Now, Argentinian style would be to cut bits off like that. Brazilian style, look at that. So lots of people asking about that board, Nick. Oh, this is a uh, big green egg um, slather board. Um, so yeah. Well, down. I'm just go and grab my tongs. Give me one minute. I've got my tongs. My spots. Got some chimichurri to go with the steak. <laughs> now this is that's me for not getting prepped enough. That's easier. Way. So I'm going to continue. I'll do this one because this is the one I thought was going to be the nicest. So. Um, I want some of that fat. I'm just going to cut across it. Oh. Now, because I cut along the grain, I'm cutting across it this way, and that will give super more. Um, if I cut that way, if I do it, I'll show you. You can see the grain is running along, and that will be tougher to eat than if you cut across it. Hopefully, that makes sense to you. We'll just do this one for now. Um, I've got a bit of chimichurri I've made. So chimichurri is just a traditional Brazilian um, uh, condiment to go with their meats. So we'll, oh, look at those. Hush plate, mum. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I've got to dress okay. it. I've got to dress it. So a bit of chimichurri. So this is basically parsley, coriander, um, some uh, garlic, some shallots. Um, some chili, the red chili in there, and then mixed with a lot of oil and some um, um, uh, red wine vinegar. Oh, that smells delish. Right, so let's get this, uh, so we'll get a couple of bits in there. Oh, somebody's gonna be happy. Get a few potatoes. She's already eaten a dessert. <laughs> yeah, a bit of the ratatouille. Just need to get her a glass of red wine. Yeah, and she'll be a happy bunny. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah. Take... Steal one of the other knives, I'll get you another one. So, oh, it does look nice, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm going to try this.
Oh, the fat just melts in your mouth. You've got to eat the fat. Don't be shy on this. Do not be shy. Um, and don't be shy about, it's not blood. Those of you who've been on my cooking classes, it's not blood, it's myoglobin. Look it up. Um, if there were blood in this, it would be black, it would have congealed, it'd be horrible because that's been hung for a while. So, anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna have our lunch now. So next week's cook, any ideas, any suggestions? Um, we'll try and get Andy back so we can do the questions and do the whole lot. Um, Morning, Ed. Um, which Ed's that? Stoneham. Morning, Ed. Ed Stoneham. He's cooked, uh, cook, cooked a lot of my dishes recently, so morning, Ed. Um, yeah, put, try this. Post your own photos up. Tell me how it went. Um, it's delicious. So, uh, yeah, so ideas for next week. If you don't come up with any, it might just be a lottery. So uh, we'll see what we're going to do. But, um, yeah. Hope Planked fish. Planked fish, okay. Yeah, we tried to get some fish yesterday, but the queue at Waitrose was hideous. So we didn't even bother going in. Um, we turned around and came home. Um, so I need a good fishmonger, that's what we need. Um, so yeah, okay, planked fish. <coughs> um, but we'll see. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously ping them in. Um, I'm around most of this week. I think will probably be my day off will be Thursday uh, when I get to go play golf. Um, but hopefully again you've enjoyed this cook we're pretty much spot on the 45 minutes um, yeah do feedback do get in contact um, if you want a rotisserie there's a lot in stock you, if you look up the Instagram you'll see Helena was hiding behind a pile of them that got delivered yesterday um, there'll be some new product as well coming out from this from um, uh, let's Q, the same company so uh, I'm working with them uh, to get those new products out um, Anyway, nick at meatsmokefire.co.uk is the email, nick with no K. Um, otherwise, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Insta, the whole lot. Um, but thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Helena, for doing the camera. Um, thank you, Mama, You're for welcome. eating all the food. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Cheers.